everyone feeling good? Happy to be here? Can we get some praise for the Lord? We're just going to begin with worshipping God. So we just stand to our feet, just begin to pray. It says in Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Does anyone have some reason to praise God today? When I was walking on my way to church, I saw two cars and they had smashed into each other. I think some of you might have seen it on your way in. And I just said to myself, God, what is the, what is the thing that is different between me and them? Like, what is the thing that has stopped me from being in that position? And it's only the grace of God. So the reason why you're all here is because of the grace of God. So that is a reason to thank the Lord. So we just want to give him thanks. Just give him thanks this morning. Just begin to lift up your voices. Just begin to praise him. Father God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you. I enter into your courts with thanksgiving. I enter into your courts with praise, Father God. You are worthy of praise. Just lift up your voices. Just think of your week. Think of all that he has done for you. Father God, we are wor- We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful that you have brought us this far, Father God. We are grateful that you have brought us to this point. We are grateful, Father God, that we even know you, that we even love you, that we even believe in you, Father God. Thank you for the gift of faith that he has given. It is not by your own works. It is not by your own power. It is the grace of God. Father God, we thank you for the hedge of protection around us, Father God. We thank you for the hedge of protection around our families, around our homes, Lord God, that you have protected us, that you have kept us, that you have kept our minds that you have kept us in perfect peace Lord God oh what mercy oh what mercy oh what mercy Lord we are grateful Lord we are grateful Lord we are grateful Lord we are grateful you are so good to us Lord you are so good to us Lord you are so merciful Lord Father God we thank you. Rabba kasetiri yama, rekesetiri yama, Rabba kosonama. If you don't have anything to thank God for, you have your breath, you have your life, you have the very being. The fact that you are awake, the fact that you are awake and that you are here, that you made it to this, came to the presence of God. Father God, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for there is nothing like your presence. There is nothing as sweet as your presence. There is nothing as transforming as your presence. Father God, we thank you for the transformation that is going to happen in this room today. We thank you, Father God, for we shall not be the same. We thank you, Father God, for we shall leave changed in Jesus' name. Begin to thank him for the change that is going to occur today. This is not just a regular Sunday, Lord. We believe that you are transforming lives. We believe that you are changing lives. You are changing our lives. Oh, Lord, we are grateful. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Just keep thanking the Lord. Right now, thank the Lord for the change that's about to happen in this service. The change that's about to happen in this service. For the change that's about to happen in your life. Thank you, Father God. For as I walked into this place, I shall not leave the same. As I walked in with faith, I shall not leave the same. God is the God that honors your faith. So we thank you, Father God, for faith, Lord God. Rabba koso tayarama, rebeke sa tayarama, rebeke teriarama koso tayarama, reke se tayarama koso tayarama, reke se tayarama, rokoso tayarama, reke se tayarama kori arama koso te. Rabba koso tayarama, rebeke sa tayarama koso tayarama. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you guys about something that happened in the last week. So I was at home, it was the middle of the night and there was a knock on the door and there was a girl who was having an episode and she came in and she was like really, really panicked. She was like grabbing my arm, she came to my house and I quietly just said, you know, calm down, it's okay. And then she ran away. And so I called the ambulance, they were looking for her. I didn't want her to be by herself. The ambulance said, if you can't find her, then we're gonna have to, we can't come. So I went in my car, looked around for her. When I found her, she was with this couple and this couple had calmed her down. And what I noticed is that the woman that was hugging her, she said, just keep your mind on me. Just keep looking at me, keep, keep talking to me, keep talking to me. And that's the same with God. As we keep our mind on God, God it says, they who keep, keep your mind on God and he will keep you in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed upon him. So during this service, we're going to keep our mind on God during the worship. We're going to keep our mind stayed on him and we'll be in perfect peace. Amen. Amen.
you heard that he's worthy of praise. Amen. So I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm down. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Sovereign, I praise cause you reign, I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, I praise cause you're true, I praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, I praise cause you're true, I praise cause there's nobody
We've all got a good reason to praise this morning. Amen? Yeah, God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time.
From the darkness, I called your name. Into the darkness, your mercy came. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your love. Yeah. 
Love. 
thank him for his great love. Lord, we thank you for your love. It is the greatest love. There's no God like you. There's no love like your love. Lord, we're just, Lord, we're just so grateful. We're just so in awe of your love for us that you came down from heaven. Jesus, that you brought us into your presence forever. You created us. You gave us life. You give us all we need. There is no love like your love. Just thank him for his love for you this morning.
praise your name on high. I can never lose the wonder of your presence in my life. Oh, your blessed spirit is Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon We're mercy for today Faithful you have been, faithful you will be. You pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Be 
your father the orphan your kindness makes us whole shoulder our weakness your strength becomes our own you make him like you clothe me in white bring in beauty for ashes I want you to just stand to your feet a moment and I just want to sing this bridge again because he will be praised forever and always especially in this house I don't want to be a house that doesn't praise God so just lift your hands and we're going to sing this again and I want you to just push for this last song give him everything that you have left give him all the praise that you have left Jesus
Can we just give our worship team, our media team, our round of applause, all our serving teams. We honor them this morning. They were amazing. You can take your seats for the moment. I have some quick announcements. Everyone happy this morning? Happy to be in the house of the Lord? Cool. So I have um, announcements. Three ways of getting connected. If you're new here, give me a wave. Any new people, welcome. We welcome you this morning. Yeah, give them a round of applause. So, three ways of getting connected if you want to join um, Elon Wimbledon. Scan the QR code or fill out the card that's in front of you or um, behind you. Um, and you can sign up. What will happen is you'll fill out your name and number and then someone will give you a call um, in the next couple of weeks and um, we will welcome you officially into the church. The second way is to register to our next Growth Track course, which will be on... 13th of April, 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. Lunch isn't provided, and it's a great way for you to be a part. Get to know our values. Um, we get to know you more. Um, it's a great way to connect with people. If you're maybe you come by yourself, great way to meet new people and get more connected. And the third way is to join a hub and small group or a serving team. Serving teams after Growth Track, um, you'll get like a, a form and you can fill out what serving team you want to be a part of. Maybe you have a gift for media, you can be a part of that once you've done Growth Track, serving whatever it is. But hubs are so important. They're small gathering groups in um, certain areas located um, to like build fellowship, um, prayer, and whatever you need. Great way to connect. Amen. So coming up, we have on the 12th of April, men's curry night. <laughs> I see the men are awake this morning. Every time we do this, it's like crickets. Um, <laughs> if you're a man, join. I think the Eventbrite link is on Eventbrite. Or just come. Um, great way to get involved, you men. Amen. The next one is David Campbell is on the 14th of April. Next Sunday, David Campbell, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, be there. Don't want to miss out. Um, any ladies in the house? I'm going to big up Mama P. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, she's currently redecorating all of the um, crash. Go check it out. Um, it looks incredible. But Warrior Brunch, get out of your comfort zone. 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. I know this is a limited ticket event. Are we almost sold out? 15 tickets. Who's got their tickets? Good to see. Good to see. If you haven't, quickly go get them. Otherwise, I promise you they will sell out. Only 100 tickets available. 20th of April. Um, if you can be there, be there. They're incredible. And then on the 21st of April, we have Becky Murray. She is incredible. Um, she runs um, an orphan one by one. Um, and so she's fire. You want to be there 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. as well. And then on the 28th of April, we have Emmanuel Smith in the house. This Emmanuel Smith is incredible. I was in uh, Germany with him, and he was just so fire. He's got so, so uh, such an anointing upon his life. This service is going to be incredible. He's here just for the 11 a.m. service, not the 6 p.m. service. But honestly, you want to be in the house. It will be probably rammed. So come here early to get your seats. Shout out to people in the overflow. Give them a round of applause. We love you. We haven't forgotten about you. You're still family. Awesome. So who's ready for our tithes and offerings? You can scan the QR code um, behind. Um, but just to start, I'm actually just going to read a scripture. And I don't know if we can get it on the screen. Um, it's Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Um, but can I have the New Living Translation? But I'm going to read it for you. It says... Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. As we scroll down to verse 11, you know, um, Jesus, in this, um, where I'm jumping, Jesus is basically, well, God is just talking to Jeremiah. 
about what's to come. But in verse 11, it says, the sound of joy and laughter, the joyful, the, sorry, the joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will be heard again, along with the joyous songs of people bringing thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. They will sing, give thanks to the Lord of heaven's armies, for the Lord is good, his faithful love endures forever. For I will restore the prosperity of this land to what was in the past, says the Lord. And as I was really digging into this this week, um, I focused on that uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 where ask on me and I will show you remarkable secrets that you do not know to come. But as I begin to read, I actually like, I kind of got a revelation for myself that ask me and, you know, he's going to restore prosperity. I felt like that was asking him about my tithe, asking him about my offering, and he will bring a joyful sound. He'll bring joyful voices. He'll bring a, a new sense of freedom. And so I really want to encourage you as we take our tithes and offerings to ask him what to sow or ask him what to give so that he can um, show you what is to come through this um, uh, tithe and, and sacrifice. And I had a, a dream last night about me being on a train, but it was one of those um, coal like run trains. And I began to like um, take coal um, and put it into the train and I had no idea what it meant. But as I began to pray, um, the Lord spoke to me and said that the train is your life. And in order for it to run, you have to gather things to put in it. And I felt that was ideas of businesses, not only like for other people, but biz like uh, business ideas, other ideas to grow in um, your walk. And I think it's to do with this offering today that actually that you'll begin to be on the train and try to find things that is going to fuel your train. Does that make sense? Are you with me? I'm still processing it. <laughs> but I want to encourage you, ask the Lord, ask him, what can I gather? Where, where can I um, gather money from so that I can give it to you so that you can give me more? And so I want to pray, but um, I want to invite the, um, uh, the baskets just to come up. And as I pray that you'll just come up. And, and so if you're sewing through QR code or, or on your phone, just tap your phone, receive by faith. So Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will just bless every single one of us in this room that we'll begin, we'll begin to look for things or look for ideas that you have blessed in order for us to run in this season. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that, that this congregation, that this family will begin to ask you on what the directions to seek, the secrets that you want to reveal to us, that you reveal them now, Lord. Lord, I pray that we'll have the faith to run to you in times of need. Lord, I pray that we will understand that it's your way not our way that Jesus that you will bless every single one of us in this place that we will be a house of um of um riches that we will not be poor in the name of Jesus but we'll be a house so blessed that we as we come in we're just singing about how blessed we are and it's not a jealousy thing but it's a declaring that the Lord is good and what he has done for me will um, encourage others to to move in that way Lord I pray that there'll be such peace as we so that it will not be that this is a job or this is a chore, but it will be something of ease in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen. If you've given yet um, or haven't, please come up um, and give in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, it is my privilege to um, honor and invite the father of this house, but my father and my house, 
um, to the platform, to the stage, to preach. I know he's got a word that is fire. He's told me the title, but hasn't told me anything in detail, and I've tried to guess, but he won't give me anything. So I'm really looking forward to this morning's message. But I love you, and I just want to welcome Pastor John. Please stand and rise to your feet as we honor the man of the house. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, give him a shout this morning. Come on, we can do better than that. I love Jesus. That's my focus. Hallelujah. Just give your neighbor a high five as you grab your seat. Tell him, get ready, get ready. I, I actually don't think you're going to be able to handle me today. If you came for a TED Talk, you are in the wrong church this morning. If you came for some motivational teaching, three points in a poem, I'm sorry, but I'm about to tread on your toes in this place. I don't know, maybe I need some people that actually want some challenge, want some fire, want it, some meat of the word. I, I need some hungry people who say, I'm not here to be entertained this morning. I'm here to be changed by the power of the word. I don't know about you, but I'm not just contending for you, but I'm contending for the body of Christ. I'm contending for the church in this nation that actually we would see a change. Are you with me this morning? And so I'm going to get in the business of the church and I, I, I was prepping this message and it dawned on me what a low standard we have achieved in the church in the UK. I began to look at the standard that God demands and then I began to look at the standard of the church and I was embarrassed as a pastor for the level that we have set the church at. Are you hearing me this morning? You read the Bible and you, you just see that God just demands so much more. Oh, Jesus. Everyone say this with me. Say, Holy Spirit. Let your eyes be in this place. He is looking this morning. No, you don't need to keep repeating. <laughs> the Bible says his eyes look to and fro. He is the God who sees. And he is looking. I'm going to show you this this morning if you want a title. My title is this, Four Men or Women that God is looking for in 2024. Let me say it again. Four kinds of man or woman that God is looking for in 2024. I don't know. Maybe you're the man. Maybe you're the woman. We're about to find out. But God is looking for someone in this place this morning. I remember a season of my life where um, I was hungry for God. Some of you have heard me tell this story, but it will set me up nicely. But I was desperate for God. I would, I would drive to work praying in tongues every morning. Shanda bakura baye, as I drove to work. I would, I would walk around the park in the lunch hour praying in tongues. Shura bahala masia baha. I would drive home from work and I would pray in tongues in my car. I would head to church or, or whatever meeting was going on. I was seeking God. I was hungry for God, seeking Him because the Bible says if you seek Him, you will find him. I, I don't know if there's any seekers in this place this morning, but I was hungry for God. And I was in my car one day and I was praying and I said, God, I am hungry for you. God, I'm desperate for you. God, I need a touch. I need a touch today. I, I want to feel your presence. I want to feel your power. I want to meet with you, God. I'm so hungry for you, God. Have you ever prayed prayers like that? If not, I pray an impartation of hunger right now in Jesus' name. And I was crying out saying, God, I need you. I need you. And I went into my living room, and this shows you how long ago. We had a 
tape player, a hi-fi, like a ghetto box, just on the side. And I don't know whether it was an angel or it was just timing, but when I walked into the living room, the tape player clicked off pause. It had been on pause, but somehow the button came off. And music began to play really loud. And it was this song. It was, I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more than ever before. I need you more. I need you, Lord. More than the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything. And Lord, as time goes by, I'll be by your side, because I never want to go back to my old life. I need you more. And I heard the Lord speak to me, and he said, John, I need you more. Here I was crying out to God, and when I walked in and the tape player kicked in and it was that song, God said, John, I need you more. It was a revelation for me. It was a moment where I suddenly realized that, yes, I needed God, but God needed me. You think your hunger for God is one way. Can I tell you, God is hungering after your time, hungering after your intimacy, hungering after men and women that would be thirsty for him. In fact, I believe that your hunger is a direct reflection of his hunger for you. God is desperate for you. Desperate for a relationship with you. But I want to show you this morning four kinds of people the Lord is looking for. Who's ready to be one of these four? Who says, God, let me be one of the four? First one I want to show you, God is looking for someone who will worship in spirit and truth. Looking for someone who will worship in spirit and truth. Uh, John 4, 23 says this, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Can we get that on the screen? And can we set it to Bible as well? It's still not set. John 4, 23 We'll wait because then we're sorted for the rest of the message. We should be on that already, not to rebuke you publicly. <laughs> Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things shall be added for you. John 4, 23. John 4, 23. Yep, next one. There we go. Then we set. But the... Next one. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Everyone say spirit and truth. For the Father is what? Seeking such to worship him. You know what this tells me? It tells me if God is seeking those who will worship in spirit and truth, it tells me that it's not a common thing. Uh, There's two or three of you who are with me. You know, I actually wonder how much of our worship today is soulish instead of spiritual. Uh Uh-oh. I wonder how much of our worship appeals to the soul when God says real worship is not in the soul. Real worship is in the spirit. Oh, we love our tunes, we love our songs, we love our hill songs and our Bethel. I'm not knocking them, hear me this morning. But can I tell you, music that just appeals to the soul is not real worship. In fact, can I be really straight with you this morning? If you know the lyrics but don't know the God, it's only karaoke. 
let me say it again. We, we don't come to sing karaoke on a Sunday, sing along to the words. We sing to a God who is in heaven. My God. And so we must worship according to his terms. Worship must be in spirit and in truth. Sorry, but it's not about a performance. Well, I just sang my song. That's worship. That is not worship. We've reduced worship down to three songs. It, it offends me today that we think God is pleased with a performance. God is not pleased with a performance and a show. He is looking for worshipers. There are two ways, two paths, the flesh or the spirit. Flesh or the spirit. It says God is spirit. In fact, can I tell you, God is more than spirit. God is love. God is a consuming fire. But when it comes to worship, he says, I am spirit. It means that you cannot connect with him from the soulish realm. You connect with him spirit to spirit. Is anyone with me this morning? If you understand the realm of the spiritual, you will understand that no spirit can manifest unless it's invoked. That's a deep statement that some of you, if you want to just tap in, that you could get lost right there. If we were to talk about demonic forces... The principle of the spiritual realm is always the same. There is an invoking of the spirit that causes it to manifest. Who knows when it comes to the kingdom of God, worship is the key to cause the presence of God to manifest. You can have the best voice, but God's not impressed with it. You can have the most sentimental worship. And I'm not talking about the tune or the tempo. That does not determine worship. If the song's fast, it's praise. If the song's slow, it's worship. It's not worship. Uh-oh. I'm trying to break some things this morning. Nothing to do with tempo. Can I tell you, praise is about what he's done. Worship is about who he is. Oh, I praise him. If God's been good to you, give him some praise. In fact, give him, give him praise right now. But, but I don't just praise him for what he's done. I worship him for who he is. He is worthy of my worship. Oh, I want to go somewhere, but I'm going to take my time. I don't need to like the song to worship. Because the worship is not for me, the worship is for him. Well, I don't like the song. That's okay. The song was not for you. The song was for him. True worship is not determined by the song. True worship is determined by the worshiper. I didn't want to say this, but I feel I have to. I could sing... Bar, bar, black sheep and still worship. Uh-oh, heresy. That's going to be a YouTube clip. <laughs> what do I mean? It's not about the words. It's about my spirit engaging to the spirit. Worship is a spiritual thing. It's a heart posture. In fact, let me say it a better way. I don't need to even sing a song to worship. I can posture myself in worship and actually achieve more in the realm of the spirit than I can sing in songs. I, I need some spiritual people to at least give me an amen right now. Oh, Jesus. And we're blessed in this house with great worship. We're blessed to have some incredible worship leaders, aren't we? Come on, come on, honor, honor them. But if you can only worship when they play your song, then you've got an issue when it comes to worship. 
What's my song? Woo! <laughs> no, you worship the worship. You don't worship the God. I find this in so many churches. They worship worship rather than worship the one who is to be worshipped. We don't come for the worship. We come for the one. Worship is just the vehicle to bring us into encounter with God. The greatest worship service I was ever in was the most terrible in the natural. There was two little old ladies who began to sing. One was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then her sidekick was like, (laughs) it was the worst worship musically I'd ever experienced in my whole Christianity. I thought, why am I here? Why is YouTube not invented that I can check it out before I go? But the presence of God hit that room like never before. It was like a glory round. I was caught up in the spirit as these two ladies began to sing. The Lord touched me in such a powerful way that the, a prophet stood up, picked me out and said, God's calling you into ministry and you're going to have a ministry that touches the nations. It was the first time God had ever told me he was calling me into ministry. But the worship in the natural was terrible. I'm just being honest with you. But in the spirit. Why? Because he says, worship me in spirit. Can can, can I tell you, posture is important in worship. Well, if you don't believe me, uh, uh, who believes yoga is wrong? If you think yoga is wrong, give me a wave. It's okay. Hopefully most of you, I've hopefully taught you well. I'm not looking. (laughs) Otherwise I'll go home and cry. But why do we believe yoga is wrong? We believe yoga is wrong because of the positions that send symbols in the realm of the spirit that open chakras and Eastern religion. It's not just exercise. It's a form of worship using posture. Do you believe that? So can I tell you posture is important in worship? That when we worship God, we don't just lift our hands as something nice to do when we feel the anointing. No, we lift our hands as a posture in worship that says, God, I surrender to you right now. Touch my life right now. We kneel in worship, we lay down in worship, we dance in worship, we shout in worship, we clap in worship. Can I tell you, the Bible is full of movement when it comes to worship, and yet Western Christianity, amen. Jesus, break every spirit that wants to put us silent in this church, every spirit that would want to sit us on our bum, we break it in the name of Jesus. And I pray for an extravagance in worship like never before to hit this house. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says this, Do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He teaches us with this text that there is a physical union and there is a spiritual union. Anyone hearing me this morning? You you join in the physical and you join in the spiritual. And when it comes to God, It's using the same image of sex with a prostitute to join in the physical. He's using actually the joining in the spirit. That actually God can join you in the spirit through worship. When it's of the spirit, it overflows. When it's worship in the spirit, it's relying on him. It's knowing him. It's singing in faith. It's worshiping in faith. I don't worship just singing songs, but I sing songs to him, spirit to spirit. I know about you, but I sometimes find this. I will start a song, and then my mind starts to think about chicken for lunch. 
And then I might start thinking about other things that I need to deal with all while I'm singing the song. Can anyone relate to that? And somewhere along the journey, I have to discipline my mind to no longer focus on all of the things that have been going on and begin to fix my eyes upon him. And I said it so powerfully at the beginning, fixing our mind, looking at him is how I worship in spirit. Psalm 29 says this, it says, Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Next verse, give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Leave it on that one for me. It says, give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Let me say it this way. How can you give him what he is due if you don't know what is due? The depth of your worship is directly connected to the depth of your revelation. Oh, now I'm preaching. You want a deeper level of worship. The way to go deeper in worship is to get a deeper revelation of who he is. Oh, he says, ascribe the glory that he's due. When you know he's due something, you can give him the worship. That's why I can worship. I, I'm not a pastor who sits down and, and writes my message during the thing. I worship him. Why? Because he picked me up when I was rock bottom. He turned my life around. He, he saved me when I was suicidal. He saved me when I was struggling with mental health. He's been too good for me to be silent. He is due my worship. And he says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Everyone say truth. truth. Hebrews 10 says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Psalm 51 says, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part you make me to know wisdom. Psalm 139 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Can I tell you where truth is found? Truth is found in the heart. This is why Jesus said these words. He says, Those people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Can I tell you, worship in spirit and in truth is when you worship with a sincere heart. Amen. Oh, like I said, I don't want to be the kind of worshiper that can sing songs with my mouth, but yet my heart be nowhere near him. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're helping me. <laughs> Psalm 24 says this, it says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who knows, worship is an ascension. Though as you worship, you ascend. This is, this is the spiritual dynamic of worship. You climb God's holy hill in worship. But the psalmist, the greatest worship leader there ever was, King David, he says, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. You, are, I'm not, you can come and sing. That's okay. But God's not looking for singers. He's not recruiting for a choir. God is looking for worshipers. Spirit and truth, I'm sorry, but three songs won't cut it. You're not even up the first set of steps in three songs. Yeah, our end goal is not just to entertain you. This is what I say. I'm here to break the culture in the church in the UK that says, I give free songs. We, we do a little offering notices, preach a sermon, get everyone out in an hour and 15 minutes. My God, I think God must be in heaven saying, I'm about to judge the church in the West because of what they've turned it into. My house is not a show. My house is a house of prayer. Free, so free songs. 
Are you kidding me? Ascribe to him what he's worth. My God is worth more than three songs. You know, Lucifer was a worship leader. So don't tell me that the devil cannot infiltrate the worship in the church. You don't think he's got a strategy to diminish the church and one of his strategy is to hijack worship, to make it into a show, make it into a performance, to limit it to entertainment that you would have tickled ears. No, I've come to tell you, my Bible says that he is worthy of my worship. He is worthy of my time. He is looking for those who worship in spirit and in truth, not watching that clock, not listening for good music but lay down lovers Mo I wonder sometimes if we're worshipping the same God I wonder if we're worshipping the same God of the Bible or whether like the Israelites we've carved another image in our own likeness uh oh You see, worship in truth says I worship him for who he is, not for who I want him to be. Oh, I want God just to be the one that I go on a Sunday, tick my box, and he makes my life okay. Sorry, that isn't real Christianity. Real Christianity says, come and die. Come lay your life down. Come give him everything. You want to know who the sacrifice is? You're the sacrifice. Get on the altar, and then the fire is going to fall. Told you, I don't mean you can handle me today. I'm only getting started. This is point one. (laughs) Let me say this. The sweetest worship is found in the fire. What do I mean? Let me show you this from Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 2. Not very often we get to preach in Leviticus. But verse 1 and 2 says this, When anyone brings a grain offering to the Lord, their offering is to be of the finest flour. They are to pour olive oil on it and put incense on it and take it to Aaron's sons, the priests. It says every time there is a grain offering, this was an act of worship, every offering must have incense. Incense. But then in verse 11, it says this. It says, every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made without yeast, for you are not to burn any yeast or honey in a food offering presented to the Lord. He says, every grain offering needs incense, but every grain offering can never have honey. Why? Because honey cannot stand the fire. When the fire, you ever tried to burn honey? Glue, black, tarry, it becomes. Why? Because it cannot withstand fire. Incense, when it burns, it releases a sweet aroma. And so one can stand the fire, the other can't stand the fire. Can I tell you, just because the worship's sweet does not mean it's producing a sweet aroma to God. Uh Uh-oh, I'm preaching better than you're giving that revelation credit for. And I want to tell you the greatest worship the Lord looks for is the worship when you're in the midst of the fire. I don't know if there's anyone going through anything this morning. If you are, maybe I'm preaching just to you. But I've come to tell you, when you're in the midst of the fire and your worship can stand the fire, that's the sweetest smelling aroma you'll give to God. When all hell is breaking loose, but you're still on your knees saying, and I will worship you in the storm. I tell you that that this is the only chance you'll get in life is when you worship him in the midst of fire because when you're in eternity, you'll never get the opportunity to worship him in a situation like you can worship today. See, some people, they can sing songs, but when the fire comes, they're out of here. They cannot withstand the fire. 
That's why our worship needs to be tried by fire. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would try our worship with your holy fire. Let it be able to withstand the fire and purification of God. Can you say amen to that? My worship leaders are saying, oh, Jesus. Sweet, but when the fire comes, it turns to a mess. Some people have had a revelation of who God is and who don't just worship because the song is nice, but they worship the God who was and is and is to come. They worship the El Shaddai, the Elohim, the Rapha, the Jireh. The greater your revelation, the greater your worship. I'll bring you more than a song. I'm going to be a worshiper who worships in spirit and truth. Can you say amen to that this morning? But I want to tell you the second person that God is looking for is someone fully devoted to him. This is what it says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. It says God is looking across the earth and One version puts it this way. It says, for someone who is fully committed to him, that he can show himself strong on behalf of. I told you we have a problem in the church. The problem is we want to come on a Sunday. And right now we have pastors saying, oh, please, can you come to church on Sunday? We like to see your face. Can I tell you that was not the standard of the Bible? The standard of the Bible was not, please come to church. Oh, we, we set the standard, or oh, would you serve in welcome team? Would you, would, you, would you serve in our kids' church? I wonder sometimes how committed are we? Can we even show up on time to serve or show up on time for church? I wonder the level of our service. Does it carry the spirit of excellence that the Bible demands, or are we just doing what we feel we can do? I'm sorry, but I need someone to give me an amen. I don't know about you, but I'm committed to this cause. You, you, you don't need to worry about me. I will spend my life for this. I will spend myself. I'm fully committed, and I know there are people in this room who are fully committed to building his kingdom here at Elam Wimbledon. If you're fully committed, give me a shout. Show me in this place. You say, I'm building this house. We're not playing. When I'm, I'm not here just to come on a Sunday, tick my box and enjoy my week playing golf. I'm not that kind of pastor. I'm on a mission. Why? Because God is looking for those fully committed to him. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said this. He says, wait in Jerusalem until you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Do I have any witnesses in this room? Give me a wave if you're a witness. Give me a wave. I want to see these hands. I'm setting you up. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, a witness is more than just sharing your story. We've reduced witnesses down to telling your testimony. That's not what the word says. You want to find out what this word says? Witness in the Greek. You want to know what word it is? You ready for it? It's the word martus. Uh-oh. It's where we get the word martyr. He says, you'll receive power so you can be my martyrs in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Now, I'll be a witness, thank you. Now, I'll share my testimony. No, You're going to die for your faith. You're going to receive power so you can die in Jerusalem, Judea, or Samaria. Do do I have any martyrs in the place? I'm just giving you the Bible. Don't be upset with me. We just watered it down so much that we want to witness in a way that doesn't offend people. My God, how far has the church gone that we don't even want to 
Talk about the blood. Talk about Jesus. Talk about sin. We just want to be friends with people and invite them to a service where they'll have a nice time, but no one's going to preach the gospel, and then maybe they will join our club. I want to tell you, that's not the Bible I read. The Bible I read is looking for people who will fully commit even to the losing of their lives. You won't build your church preaching like this, Pastor John. No, but I'll build his kingdom. I'll build his kingdom. I'm not looking for a crowd. I'm looking for an army. I'm looking for some people who know what they're getting into. I'm not living for this life. I'm living for eternal life. Fully committed. And here's the thing. He says, I'm looking across the world. That means he can't find it. He can't find these people. Some of you are on fire and you feel like you're just someone in church. No, I want to tell you, when the fire's burning in your life, you are probably one of a, of a small group of people. Fully devoted, fully committed. And he says, when I find that person, I'm going to show myself strong on their behalf. He said, if I can find that person, I'm going to start showing off that I'm with them. Oh. He said, if I can just find someone committed to me, then I'm going to come alongside them and I'm going to start showing the world. Oh, my God. Someone who lines up with his kingdom purposes, his kingdom plans. He says, I'm coming on the back of that. That's why he's just looking for someone, someone that says, I'll fast, I'll pray. Not pastor can fast, pastor can pray. Looking for someone who will lay down their lives. Luke 10 says, you shall love the Lord with all of your heart. This is real worship. It's not half-hearted. Just tell your neighbor, get off the fence. If you stay on that fence any longer, you're going to get splinters in your backside. Get off the fence. You've got one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. You, you, You come to church on a Sunday, you sing your songs, but by Monday, you don't look no different from the world. Oh, I could, I could carry on. Oh, Jesus. Dive in the deep end. Dive into this. Dive. Wouldn't it be awesome if as a church, every single one of us dived fully into the kingdom at this time? Said, we're not here for religion. We're here laid down lovers of God, selling our lives apart, sanctifying, consecrating ourselves for his kingdom purposes. God's looking for a church like that. Number three, he was looking for someone who will worship in spirit and truth. He'll look for someone fully committed to him. Number three, he's looking for someone who would stand in the gap. Ezekiel twenty two thirty says, So I sought for a man among them who would make a war and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. I've told you. We we can think, oh yeah, there's people doing this. That's not what the Bible tells me. My Bible tells me God has to look for worshipers. God has to look for people fully committed. He has to look for an intercessor. I don't know even in the nation right now whether God is saying, UK, even today to us, I need someone to stand in the gap for this nation. Ephesians 6, 18 says, pray, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer, all prayer 
and supplication in the Spirit. In, in the Amplified Classic, that one which you had on, it says, pray at all times. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer. I need you to see this. It shows us that there is more than one kind of prayer. All manner of prayer. There is not just one form of prayer. There are many different ways you can pray. Is anyone with me? So God is not looking for just any old prayer. God is looking for an intercessor. He's looking for someone who would stand in the gap of the nation and of regions. Looking for some people who will stop trying to build their own kingdoms and start trying to build his kingdom. He's going to look for some people who are not so interested in building the local church and they're more interested in breaking open a region, breaking open a nation. I don't know about you, but I've not come to just build Elon Wimbledon. I've come to shift things in the realm of the spirit over London, over the UK, over Europe. I need some intercessors in this house who don't don't just come to church but say I've got a mission an assignment my God looking for the apostolic who will see their assignment is to transform nations I'm going to I'm going to show you something so powerful blew me away in a moment this is our our assignment it's not for a nice time in church we've made the church For consumers. That's not the assignment. The end game is not more people in church. The assignment in the realm of the spirit is the transformation of lives and the transformation of land. I need some people to help me right now. Don't go tired. I'm I'm getting to the best bit. James 5, 17 says, Elijah was a man just like us. Uh, that He prayed earnestly and it would not rain. And then he prayed after three years and it rained again. What does it tell us? It tells us that Elijah was just like me and you, but his prayers could open the heavens and his prayers could close the heavens. You have the authority to unlock this region. You see, Apostle Paul did not just go and make churches. In fact, uh, he, he planted churches. He did it, but he never built a mega church. But he would step into a region and he would break open a region. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the devil mad. I feel it in the atmosphere. Jesus says to Peter, while you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We throw it around, but we've not got enough revelation to actually do anything with it. And some of you, I'm going to lose you, but it's a reflection on your depth right now spiritually. I don't say it to rebuke you. I say it to show we've got to go deeper. Yeah, come on, stay with me. Loosing things in the heaven. Everything that takes place on the earth is a direct reflection of what is taking place in the heavens. And so as believers, our assignment is to change things in the heaven so they manifest on the earth. This is why as intercession, we can actually break something in the spirit that actually means that when we do witness, we get different results. Oh, come on, Jesus. Help me break this today. You say, well, I've tried this. I've gone after revival, everything you're talking about today. Fully devoted, contending for revival, and all hell has broken loose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is scared. You know, if you get pushed back, you want to take it as a compliment. Some of you, you start getting on fire and then the enemy comes. It's like, oh, no, I'll go back to where I was. No, we are meant to make the devil mad. Principalities are meant to manifest when we're about to break open regions. Jesus. We can't be content with a casual Sunday morning Christianity. 
I'll say it again. We can't be content with casual Sunday morning Christianity. God is looking for the arrowhead. He's looking for forerunners. He's looking for the apostolic. He's looking for the breakers. He's looking for those that will break open, not just a service, but break open a region. He's looking for someone fully committed who will intercede. He's looking for worshipers in spirit and truth, for a man or a woman that can change society. I don't know about you, but I, I don't just want... To pastor you, I love you. But if this becomes my life achievement, I have failed miserably in the calling of God to transform nations. Some of you, you're, you, you, you're so desperate for a pulpit when your assignment is never a pulpit. Your assignment is to change things in the realm of the spirit. You're looking for a platform when God is saying the greatest platform you have is to ascend in the spirit, change things in the atmosphere, decree a thing, declare a thing, and then see the thing manifest on the earth. I'm talking a different dimension beyond religion. Religion says, come, pay your tithe, sing a song, go home again. No, we're talking about real supernatural Christianity where you've been given all authority to trample on the scorpion and the serpent. I'm not here to play and sing songs. I'm here to damage spiritual realms. Macedonian man appears to Paul in a vision. And there's a man calling to us to help him. There are men and women across this nation calling for us to help him. I, I, I see the vision. He, he was on his way to Asia and this Macedonian begins to call out and he goes to Macedonia. And as he steps into Macedonia, the gospel breaks into Europe. He breaks into a region through intercession. You know, territories bear the fruit of what's ruling them. Principalities will manifest when regions are about to crack open. Let me show you this. I'm, I'm getting there. You still with me? Yeah. Proverbs 21, 22 in the Passion Translation says, A warrior filled with wisdom ascends into the high place and releases breakthrough, bringing down the strongholds of the mighty. Do I have any wisdom filled warriors in this place? You want to know who wisdom is? Wisdom is a man. His name's Jesus. If, if, you're, if you're full of Jesus, this is the warrior that Proverbs talking about who ascends to the heavenly places and releases breakthrough, bringing down strongholds on the earth. Oh, get ready. Proverbs 8. 1 through 3 says this, From the top of the mountains of influence, she speaks into the gateways of the glorious city. At the place where pathways merge, at the entrance of every portal, there she stands ready to impart understanding, shouting aloud to all who enter, preaching her sermon to those who will listen. You see, don't, don't tell me to be quiet. It says that she's shouting, shouting, and, and she's preaching. Can I tell you, we need more preachers in this hour. We have lots of teachers. We have lots of TED Talks and motivational speaking, but we need some preachers who will stand again in the gates of the city, at the portal, at the place where the pathways merge, and proclaim the truth of the gospel. You see, the battle is always for the gate. The enemy is always trying to get the gate. He's trying to lock up the things that cause the region or the territory to be shut down. That's why if we can possess the gate, we possess the land. Uh-oh. Revival's not too hard. There is a revival cry that will crack open a region. 
It, the, and I'm not talking about me. If you're looking, yeah, you go, Pastor. Go, Pastor, we're behind you. No, I'm talking that God is looking in this room for men and women who will, who will partner with him to bring breakthrough to this region. I want to show you this. I came across an ex-satanic high priest. His name is John Ramirez. Anyone heard of John Ramirez? Yeah, all over this room. Wow. Ex-satanic high priest. He was, uh, he was high up and he's now a born-again Christian. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing better than plundering the enemy's army. He became a born-again believer, but in one of his writings, he, he began to say that he was given demonic assignments. He was given assignments in this satanic cult as he explained Satanism and witchcraft. And he said that he would be given assignments to lock down regions. And this is how they would lock down a region. They would find an animal and they would sacrifice the animal and they would pour the blood on the land. And he said the next thing that would happen is he said he would astral plane into the heavens. It was a partnering with the demonic spirit that would take him up into the heavens. And then he said from the heavens... He would use his words to lock down the region. Oh, I, f I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You see, we have blood that is better than the blood of animals. We have a way to ascend to the heavens that is better than astral planing with demonic experience. And we have words that can open up regions and nations and lock territory. Don't tell me that some satanic high priest has more power than you. His blood is greater than that blood. My voice is greater than his voice. I can ascend the heavens. I declare right now in the name of Jesus, this territory open in Jesus' name. Oh, I think I'm going too spiritual for you today. Is anyone with me? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Blood and words, he would lock down a region. Well, I've come to tell you, blood and words will open the region. Apostolic, taking regions, apostolic, taking nations. I refuse apostle to be a title. The apostolic is a mission. The apostolic is an assignment. If we're in an apostolic house in this nation, if God is beginning to say, this is an apostolic house, we better act like apostles. We better act like we are bigger than a local church and begin to see we have an assignment to take the nation in the realm of the Spirit. Where are my intercessors in the house? God's looking for a man that would stand in the gap, a woman that would take hold of the gateway, take hold of the threshold in this region, who will declare the heavens are open. And the fourth kind of person God is looking for, if I can have the keys. God is looking for someone who is moving in faith. This is what it says in Luke 18, verse 8. It says, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? It means that there is still a lack of faith on the earth. He's actually wondering whether, he, when he comes, whether he will even find any. My God. Oh, no, 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 you, you, that's not correct. The, the, the church is full of faith. No, the church is full of the show. I'm just going to tell you what Jesus would say. Uh, yeah. He's not looking for church attendance. 
He's not looking for tithers. Now the tithe is proof that you don't think you did it yourself. Actually, that was a powerful statement. The tithe is proof that you don't think you did it yourself. Are you hearing me? It's a reminder that His goodness has done it in my life. Don't ever forget the Lord, especially as you increase. I'm, I'm interceding. We're going to make a powerful announcement in the next few weeks on the building offering. Anyone excited for that? I, I, I have to hold myself in, but your mind's going to blow in Jesus' name, okay? But God's looking for faith. He's looking for worshipers in spirit and truth. He's looking... Looking for someone fully committed. He's looking for someone who would intercede, but he's looking for faith. In fact, I want to tell you, he's looking for some people who will believe beyond the norm. He's looking for some people who will refuse to settle for religion, man-made boundaries and limitations. He's looking for some people who will worship him for who he is. Some people who will fully give themselves for this cause. He's looking for some people who will believe him for regions and nations. Some people that he can show himself strong on behalf of. He's looking for some men and women of faith. Just hold it for a moment for me. Hold it for a moment. His eyes... I believe his eyes are in this place. Something has to break over this nation. And my prayer is it would break with us. Looking for some people in this place. Looking for some people who've broken beyond church attendance. Broken beyond the natural realm. Broken beyond the veil who know the power that's at work with them. He looking for some people who know that lives hang in the balance. I, I don't know how I can portray God's heart more than this right now, that we would understand the assignment is far greater than us having a good church. There are millions of souls who hang in the balance if you don't arise and become the man or woman that God needs you to be. He's looking for some Davids who will hide in the, not hide in the trenches when Goliath appears. He's looking for some Peters who will refuse to stay in the boat but walk on the water. He's looking for some Daniels who will not hide their faith, but be prepared to be thrown into the den of lions. He's looking for some Shadrachs, some Meshachs, some Abednegoes, who will say, we will not bow our knee to any other idols. He's looking for the real church to emerge. He's looking for a real believer to arise. The Bible says, where is the God of Elijah? Well, I want to tell you, where are the Elijahs of God? Where are the men and women of God that he's looking for in this hour? Where are the Smith Wigglesworths? Where are the Wesleys? Where are the Whitfields? Where are the men and women of God who will arise? Will he find faith? Will he find a worshiper? Will he find someone fully committed? Will he find someone fully devoted God is looking in this nation and the question is will that be you you can play again Jesus I pray this morning break religion off us again I pray for the veil to be removed right now in this atmosphere I pray for a level of spiritual understanding that we've never even dreamt or imagined was possible I pray for such supernatural insight that even 
the depth of revelation today would take us to a higher dimension of worship. God, I pray for such a, a greater ascension in the realm of the Spirit. Father, that we begin to contend, Father, not just together, but on our own for, for, for this land, that we begin to pray and we begin to fully commit to this mission, not to build Elam Wimbledon, but to build the church in this nation. God, we pray again for an open heaven over this house. We pray again for an open heaven over this region. We thank you that there is power in the blood. We proclaim the blood of the Lamb over Wimbledon. We proclaim the blood of the Lamb over Morden and Mitcham and Father in Croydon and um, up the northern line across London. May the blood of Jesus claim this territory this morning. And in the realm of the Spirit, we declared that this land would be unlocked I need some people to start praying I need some people to start interceding we declare let there be an open heaven we declare open in Jesus name swing wide you heavenly gates be opened up you ancient doors that the king of glory may come in we loose the heavens we lose the heavens. Come on, I can't hear you. You should be on your feet. Come on, intercede. Come on, intercede. Souls, God, we need souls. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Open this region. Open this land, God, we pray. Souls, souls, give us souls. Male, Shando, Mondo, Mende, Kimando, Ramondo, Simende. Come on, go to war with me. Come on. Male, Malo, Malondo, Kimando, Ramande. Ma, Ma, hey, K, K. K, Rabo, Shondo. God, give us this nation. Give us worshipers, God. Give us intercessors. Give us hearts for the committed to you. God, break off our apathy. Break our lukewarmness. Father, I pray you break sin. Break the bounds of sin off us today. Male, mando, rebe, ki mando, mondo. Drive it out today. Anything displeasing, drive it out of us. We commit to your cause. We commit to your cause, God. Mando, Shibe, Kimando, don't get tired, it's been a minute. Come on, come on. Robo, Rabe, Mala, Male, Mele, Mende, Mo, Mala, Simando, Kimande, Raba, Shando, Mo, K, K, Kiraba, Ye. Yeah. Oh. Jesus. Could it be Rabba Babo Rebebe? Male Mando. Souls, God. God, we're asking for souls. Give us this land as an inheritance. Give us this nation as an inheritance. We ask you for the nation. Break open the region. Break open the territory. Every principality and power, let it fall. Every hindrance to revival, let it come down. Let it come down. Every restriction, every barrier, every false God. 
come down, come down, come down. Break every spirit of performance off your church. Let the fire fall again. Send the fire, God, like you did on the day of Pentecost. It's far we want, for far we plead. Send the fire. Malay, Malay. Malo, she. I want to do this bit of a different way today. But you've heard me preach today and you would say, I need to fully commit my life again to Jesus. You would say, I need to give him my heart fully, fully devoted. You say, you know what, that's been, not that I've been backslidden, but I know I've not been where I'm supposed to be. And you're hearing me preach today and you would say, yeah, I need to commit again. I'm going to ask you to just put your hand up. Just acknowledge that this morning. Thank you. You say, I'm fully committing to this cause. I'm fully committing to this purpose. Be bold in it. I want to see your hands. I I know there should be more. I said, show me, show me. uh, My hand's raised. I'm I'm, I'm committed, but I, I, I don't want there to be anything. Anything. Maybe you're here and you know there's sin in your life. This is your moment to repent. Say, Father, forgive me right now. Wash me right now. Make a decision in this atmosphere. You're not leaving with it. Make make decisions right now. Fully devoted for him. I'll have no other idols. I'll have... Nothing that will stand in the way of my relationship with you. No blockages in the realm of the Spirit. Father, wash this place right now. Cleanse it by your blood. Not preaching law, not preaching legalism, preaching holiness and purity. Clean hands, pure hearts. And Father, I pray again that you raise up in this place an army of intercessors. An army of intercessors who will stand at the gates. Yeah, let him move. Let him move just for a moment. You, you, You know, this thing is serious. The the devil takes this thing serious. I was I was in prayer a few weeks ago. I am gonna finish. I know you want to go home, but I'm gonna finish. But I was in prayer a few weeks ago and I was asking the Lord why the atmosphere had been tough. It was a particular meeting and the breakthrough was hard. And I was saying, God, why was the atmosphere tough? And the Lord spoke to me one word. He said the word witchcraft. And at the moment he said this word witchcraft, a pigeon flew into the window of the house. It broke its neck and fell to the floor. Keisha was like, John, come, 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 get the bird. I'm like, what the hell? This pigeon's neck's broken. And I was processing what was going on when the following Sunday we come to church and Benny goes out the back doors of the church and there was a dead fox lying at the back doors of the church. And you know foxes don't just lie down and die. Foxes, they go to somewhere hidden to die that's what they do if they're sick there was there's seemingly nothing wrong and yet the fox was dead at the door now I I don't know 
I don't know how the fox got there, but I know the two incidents took place in the same week. The one incident, what God was saying, witchcraft was trying to come against the church. And in the next incident, there's something laying dead at the doorway to the church. You see, don't, don't tell me that I'm preaching something crazy. No, I'm preaching that there is a war going on. You, you don't think we're on the devil's radar? Then you don't have a clue what's going on spiritually in this place. And if we're not prepared to up our game, then the enemy's going to shut us down. Are you with me this morning? I, I take these things seriously. Why? Because lives hang in the balance. Your walk is a factor. I need soldiers who will partner, raise arms, that when we gather together, we won't let the atmosphere affect us, but we'll affect the atmosphere. And I need some believers who, when they see something not right, you'll get on their knees and begin to pray, stand in the gap for what's going on. I, I, I need you to begin to see that you're not here to spectate, but you're here to go to war with me. You're here to fight with me. You're here to contend with me for this nation. Do I have any soldiers in this place? This is what we're doing. We'll let the rest of the church do it the way they want to do it. But can we determine this morning in this house? This is a, this is a vision sermon, if you're not wondering. Can we determine in this house that we're going to be a little bit different than every other church? We're going to go back to the Bible and say, we don't exist for ourselves. We exist to influence the nation in the spirit. So Father, I pray right now, that your eyes would be on this house right now. Oh, Father, I pray right now, your eyes, even upon our lives in this moment, that as a church, you would hear our cry, that we say today, if you're looking for a man and you're looking for a house, we'll be that man or woman, we'll be that house. If you're looking for some worshipers, we'll be your worshipers. If you're looking for some intercessors, we'll be your intercessors. If you're looking for fully committed, faith-filled believers, we'll be those people. God, would you trust us? Trust us in this hour with your heavenly assignment. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let's just hope. Yeah. Whoa. One of the things we're going to do next week. I'm going to give you a card next week. And I'm going, to, I'm going to want you to write down seven names. Seven names that you're going to write on that piece of card. And between now and July, we're going to pray every week for those seven names. We're going to begin to contend. I, I want to move us now. I want to shift gears again. That we begin to intercede for souls in this coming season. Who's up for that? Let's believe for a harvest, yeah? Awesome. My time is up. If you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he died on the cross, buried in the tomb, rose again from the dead three days later. And he says, all who call on my name shall be saved. If you turn from your sins and turn to him, you can be born again. If you're here this morning and you say, I need to be born again, pray for me. Then I want to pray for you quickly to finish. If that's you, give me a wave. Is there... Anyone this morning that needs to say yes to Jesus, I don't want to leave this place and spend the afternoon thinking, should I have done it? Is there anyone this morning? If not, I want us all to pray this prayer for those online. Everyone say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn from sin. And I turn to you. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Give the Lord one more clap. We're going to do baptisms next Sunday. We're back again tonight. Pastor Keith is in the house. Uh, Pastor Ade leading worship, 6 o'clock here, or join us online. Just reach out a hand. I want to bless you as the worship team come. May the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. God's not finished with you yet. You're about to possess the gates of the enemy. You're about to take territory. You're about to reign as a king supreme in this land. You're going to walk in an apostolic anointing. You're going to walk in power. And you're going to see giants fall before you. Even by July, I prophesy, the breakthrough's going to hit like never before. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord one more clap. We'll see you next time. The worship team will lead us out in a song, and we'll see you then. Thank you.